So first, before I even update you guys, I just wanted to say hey to all of my new subscribers. Um, I've noticed that I had like 800 subscribers. So hey, thank you guys for coming over and just welcome to my channel. Um, hopefully you guys enjoy what, you know, the content and uh, hopefully it will push you guys even further to growing closer to the Lord, which is the goal. So, um, but real quick, hopefully it won't take too long. Um, I really wanted to just talk to you guys about um, just this little social media break that I've been on. Um, it turned into something I've never would have expected. Um, and without saying much, I ended up breaking down actually. Um, I think about f a few days after um, I turned all the cameras off and the social media and everything like that, um, I ended up, I was, I just remember studying for my exam and it was a mental health ex exam and in that exam in particular um we're learning about content that pertains to um basically what my uh older sister has been going through and my older sister who is missing she's been missing for six months now and uh, it triggered a lot of memories um in particular you know i always get my numbers mixed up my sister and i we're like 15 months apart and we're really close, extremely close. Like if you look at any type of baby picture, you'll see her and I, we're either dressed alike or we're just always together. Um, and I think, honestly, I think I just, not just or, or did, but I'm actually going through it. I'm actually um, grieving. I'm literally grieving. So just to kind of give you just a snapshot of what's been going on, um, last year, you know, when I went to Arizona, it was an emergency leave because my older sister, she called me and told me she almost died and uh, overdosed because she had she was struggling with addiction. And we ended up going to this Christian rehab type house I don't know it's called celebrate recovery she was doing well um, and she was making new friends and uh, these are addicts who um, actually struggled with addiction and then they found Jesus in the midst of it all and Jesus has been helping them uh, step by step by step uh, just transforming them you know so all was going well with her and then on the 29th of November my mother was in the hospital and um but nevertheless you know i think that was like the first time ever in my walk to where um i just didn't feel god and i know we we don't go off of our feelings but uh I, i'm typically sensitive to his presence and for the first time i just didn't feel him at all i remember sitting on the couch i remember out loud saying god where are you and uh immediately right after i said god where are you um on my phone a uh, scripture pops up and it says I will never leave you nor desert you you know and it was from Hebrews 13 I believe and uh, still till this day it was from the Bible app and still to this day I was like I do not know how that scripture popped up on my phone because typically I'll get like scriptures of the days in the morning and that was in the evening so I still till this day that was a whole mystery so anyway I ended up flying out to Arizona and I was in my mom in my mom's hospital room she was there for six days and still you know my sister she was going through the whole addiction process you know my mom's in the hospital so here I am just there and I remember it was my time to sleep in the hospital with my mom and again I didn't feel God at all I don't know it was just a very rough time and I remember at 2 a.m. in the 2 a.m. one of the uh, nurses walk in um, I think she was a nurse's aide she ends up walking in and I asked her I woke up because I heard her and I asked her I said hey what's my mom's weight Oh, I think I asked her something about the weight and all I said was praise God and I ended up going to sleep so um, <clears throat> as soon as I said praise God here she goes she says are you religious and I'm like excuse me she goes are you religious and um, I told her yes I was tired I'm not gonna go and tell her the difference between relationship versus being religious so I just said yes come to find out this woman was suicidal um, I leave my mom we're in the bathroom and I have the word out and we're just going through scriptures and scriptures and scriptures trying to give her hope and then long story short just for the sake of time I ended up leaving my mom at her bedside um, that evening and went over to meet this woman at a McDonald's and we had a full-blown Bible study and uh, you know I told her well, I remember telling her this I said look if Jesus Christ was not real do you really believe that I would leave my mom in the hospital room right now just to tell you who I don't even know about 
uh, the hope that he brings, you know. So anyway, that that happened. Um, a lot of details I'm leaving out, but God used that moment to show me that even when things do not make sense and even in the midst of the darkness, he is still working behind the scenes. And that's that right there ended up um, just fueling me you know but it caused my older sister who was in a great environment to go back home to an unhealthy environment um to in order to take care of my mother <sighs> things happened and she ended up relapsing may approaches ended up trying to get her some help and then things didn't work out there and uh she went on the bus she had a mental break um and she left her cell phone her money her wallet her everything on the bus and ran fearing that somebody was out to get her trying to kill her and we have not found her since and um you know the first time i was alone i remember feeling angry for the first time and the anger didn't last too much because at the um, as soon as i started questioning saying why immediately right after that I can't explain it, but there was this presence that entered into the room. I call it like the glory of the Lord. And I call it the tangible peace of God. That's the only way that I can ever explain that. And, uh, the Lord ended up just giving me this peace, this super, I call it a supernatural peace because the events that followed after that, there was no way that I was able to um, have, you know, go through and clearly go through with a clear mind without the peace of the Lord. And the events that followed after that was talking to three different detectives, looking from state to state to state, trying to figure out where my sister uh, left off, trying to figure out if she even got off the bus in Arizona, come to find out she didn't. She got stuck in, um, or she, she ran off the bus um, in uh, Kansas City, Missouri, you know, near that area. Um, so anyway, that was a very long process. After that, I continued fixing my eyes on the Lord. Yeah, honestly, just trusting in Him. And then that's when I ended up, um, you know, going through mental health and I realized, I'm like, oh my gosh. It's like it's forcing me to start dealing with the things that I didn't even understand, you know, regarding my sister, Natasha. And uh, as soon, like I said, I felt like a stirring of the Lord to just take a break from social media. Here I was thinking that I was going to get closer to the Lord, but I believe God saw the events that were to follow. And the events that followed, like I said, I broke down. And I'm still, I'm still going through and I'm still grieving uh, regarding all of this. And, um, you know, yeah, I just started just breaking down. And I've never in my walk with the Lord ever experienced anger toward Him up until last month and i told the lord everything my anger with him i told him everything because of all of the events that happened you know while i was walking with him and everything that happened with my sister and uh you know i didn't understand and all this and that but i just tell you what in the midst of that anger god is he's proven and he continues to prove how patient and how much of a beautiful god he is because he didn't scold me when i was angry with him Instead, he caused people to come toward me and to help me. And um, he's still helping me and he's so present and he's so faithful in the midst of this process. So, yeah, this is like the worst. I've never experienced this ever in my life. It's the worst, I'm, I'm literally, I feel like this is a dark time for me right now. But God is so faithful, he's so there every single step of the way every step of the way you know before the lord um i was depressed i was just angry i was everything and um it was terrible i mean i really considered taking my life because i didn't have any hope and uh now now that i'm with the lord now that i'm walking with him this is like the worst thing that i've ever experienced ever in my life yet he is so present <laughs> and I still have that hope living inside of me you know and Jesus is just he's he's there he's there and the thing about it is he'll actually answer my prayers like he actually does answer my prayers just to kind of let me know that he is still there he is still aware of every single thing every single thing he's still there so anyway um <laughs> and I always think about the scripture you know be angry but do not sin you know don't let the rat let don't let the sun go down on your wrath you know so 
now what I'm doing is, um, you know, whenever I get into these moods, I literally just talk to the Lord. I literally pour out my heart before the Lord on everything, every single thing. And um, I encourage whoever is going through it to, to do exactly that. He is a refuge if you allow him to be. He truly is. And um, he's a very purposeful and intentional God. Because um, let me tell you, at first I was like, why, why do I even have to go through all of this? But let me tell you, after going through all of this and grieving and everything, I find myself uh, in one of the mental health facilities for my class because you know we've been going through this this whole semester it's in an addiction house and um, I'm listening to the stories of everybody trying to get help you know and just their struggles and their battles and everything like that and what they did I remember sitting in the back of the room and um, you know the instructor there he was saying you know what you guys we don't do this often but let's go ahead and do it everybody stand up in the room and say your date of I don't know I can't remember what they called it but like like kind of like your sober sobriety date or something like that anyway they stood up and said hi I'm Jim I'm an alcoholic and I've been sober since such and such you know so every single person would say that and then I remember leaving out and then this woman came to me and her and I were talking and um, <clears throat> the Lord positioned me into such a place to where I could take this ring off and show her the date that's located inside of this ring. And I told her, I said, on this day, four years ago, the Lord delivered me from my um, depression, from this, from that, you know. And it was the same stuff that these people were battling with. And I was able to tell her about the hope that Jesus Christ brings when you, when you actually do trust in him. When you just place all of your faith and your trust in him. So God used that experience um, to show, you know, to show me that um, he may not cause, he may not have caused the, the disappearance of my sister, but he's certainly using it. You know, he's uh, allowing th certain things for me to go through um, in order to bring him glory. And I think that's what's happening right now. So he's an intentional God. So, you know, if you're following after Christ and you're in a dark corner, I just encourage you, you know, to keep your eyes on him. It is hard. It truly is. But you got to discipline yourself to do that or put that scripture on the wall, you know, uh, goodness, it's in the New Testament, but just fix your eyes on him. Um, and whenever you do break down, it's OK. It is OK. It's called the grieving process. And, you know, just because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you does not make you exempt from that process. So allow yourself to grieve, you know, that brings healing. And, and, and certainly, most, most certainly, do not um, cover any type of feelings that you may have from the Lord. He already sees it. He already sees what's happening in here. He already sees what's happening here. So make the time to just pour it out onto him. He's listening and he cares for you. And trust me, he'll blow your mind. He will. So um, that's really what I wanted to leave you guys with. Um, that's what's been happening, you know, for this entire break. Um, yeah, I'm going through it right now. Um, but, you know, I, I, I have hope. And, um, yeah. I am going, to, I'm looking forward to the day of just looking back on this dark, this dark time and just being like, thank you, Lord. Matter of fact, I think I'm starting to do that now. Starting to. <laughs> starting to. For anybody that actually hung in there with me through this long, long video, Y'all are awesome. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Um, yeah, because not everybody has time to watch over 20 minutes of some random person talking. So anyway, I love you guys. And y'all take care and God bless you guys. Bye. On that day, we will sing of the name more excellent than angels. A purified bride, refined heart, speech, and mind. Where unity and fellowship is perfected in the church. Where divine love rests in the hearts of the inhabitants of the new earth. And receive a crown only to cast it down at the feet of the resurrected Jesus in a perfect ceaseless form of worship singing. Glory to the liberating king who came not to conquer kingdoms but conquer hearts and restore men back to what they were intended for. An escape from this life marked by anguish, a great fountain of love that flows from heaven's gates awaits us. You can take this world, its joys and its fleeting pleasures, but give us Jesus, our future hope and our greatest treasure. The fulfillment of our expectation with nothing to separate us, nothing to hinder the saints from the greatest expression of adoration. Finally fit with language to describe, but the right words to express, the richness of eternal possession, the blessing of 
inheritance Where God will be seen through purified eyes Purged from the sin that blinded us from viewing God as glorified Where love will be expressed with a perfect affection Until then, we wait with expectation For all that we will acquire in heaven You did everything required to save us and bring us into your presence So to know you and behold you is our heart's desire There is nothing higher, nothing greater to acquire Holy, holy, holy is the song of the choir Your people sing your praises, gathered from all the nations We were chosen to be holy and blameless before the earth's foundation And it's only on the basis of your glorious grace And we will never grow tired of gazing upon your face And falling before your feet, worshipping at your throne Your appearance is like carnelian and precious gemstones like nothing we've ever seen your glory never fades the lamb of god who was slain to wash away sin stain we were ransomed by your blood your loss was our gain and you live forevermore lord forever you will reign the king of all kings name above every name and everyone who trusts in you will not be put to shame one